Sailor Fred. I'm one of the last uh, tattoo artists from my father's litter. There was four kids. I'm the youngest out of the four. I'm the only one tattooing anymore. Uh, at one time there was my Uncle Mike, my father, and us four boys tattooing in different parts of the country. So we're pretty well known in the carnival business since my father was a carny. We grew up on him. And in the tattoo world, <clears throat> My old man made the coastal machine, which gave him a lot of uh, hits on it with the younger crowd. The older guys naturally knew us all. The new guys heard of us, never met us. We all traveled, but we met quite a few people uh, during our lifetimes. I'm, I'm basically retired now. I do have this little shop, a little town in Springwater, New York, upstate, about an hour south of Rochester. Uh, we just don't want to give it up as it was. Uh, I've been around so many uh, tattoo artists, I couldn't name them all. Uh, one time I put together a tattoo museum, and uh, it was all nostalgic, uh, more equipment and stuff than pictures. A lot of museums have more pictures than machines or tubes or uh, drones and paintings that other artists have made. So it was a pretty cool thing, but it just didn't go over on the carnival lot. So we're here today, um, more about my father and, and, and us four boys. So my father started tattooing somewhere in the early 50s. And my uncle was uh, in the Seaside or Monterey, I, I, I don't remember. He, he was Nasty Mike. Uh, and he got my old man, uh, help, helping the old man get along. And, and they met sometime in the 50s in Chicago. And my old man being a, a Kearney, when he came home in the wintertime to Coney Island, Coney Island Freddy, Freddy Grossman was there, and he jumped in Freddy's shop for the winter months. And my uncle taught my old man how to do what they call feather shading at the time. Uh, before that, there was just either flat into nothing, just a straight line, kind of like a speedball pen, as we used to draw the flash with. And uh, I remember Freddy Grossman telling me the story that he asked my old man to teach him how to, how to feather shade, and my old man said, Gimbals don't tell Macy's everything. And that, that ended their partnership as tattooing together. But they stayed friends all through the years. And I just heard that, uh, today, actually, that uh, Freddie Grossman died. He did have a small shop in South Florida for uh, quite a few years. Uh, so my oldest brother is was called Sailor Barty Jr. He changed it to Howie the Hand back somewhere in the late 60s, early 70s. He worked in Van Nuys, California uh, with Doc Dog, uh, Charlie the Angel, Good Time Charlie, uh, California Ralph. And most of them guys are all dead. I know uh, Doc Dog is still alive in, uh, outside of Tampa. It's called Ybor City and he still has the Las Vegas Tattoo Company. Uh, my brother Larry tattooed on and off, mostly carnivals when we were kids. He still tinkers, just like friends. He's more of a truck driver than he is a tattoo artist. Uh, my brother Froggy, or Alan was his real name, he strained his vocal cords talking in front of a motodrome on a carnival and he had that rah, voice, so he got the name Froggy. And he had a shop in uh, Maine, uh, Waterville, Maine. And it was uh, Captain Frog's Lily Pad Tattoo Studio. And then he opened another one somewhere in Maine. I, I'm not exactly sure. I lost a lot of memory. And I had a shop since 75. Before 75, I just worked for the old man on the carnivals. And 75, I opened up my first shop. And uh, it was called Sailor Fred's Golden Needle Tattoo Studio. And all through the years, that's what I used. And this little shop now, my, my girlfriend's name is Cat, so this is Tat Cat Tattoo. Uh, so Miss Cat, I broke her into eight in eight, 1981. And she does most of the tattooing here. I get tired in the afternoons. 
well, um, this is basically uh, a short hours, real little itty bitty shop, but I'm still tattooing. Uh, tons and tons of stories I could tell. Um, uh, Stanley and Walter Moskowitz, they, they showed me how to get a tattoo off without scarring the body. This was back in the early 70s. Uh, the only way to get them off, the Navy grinded them off. They called it, uh, ep, uh, what was that? Uh, derma Dermagraze. Uh, Dermagraze. Derma meaning skin. Uh, some Canadian guy came out with an acid, which was silver nitrate. Uh, Hydrochloric acid and silver nitrate. And if any of you guys heard of uh, Jack Dracula, uh, he had his whole face tattooed. At one point, he tried to take his tattoos off, and the acid made more of his card than the tattoos did. Uh, it was Huck Spaulding, so from Spaulding and Rogers, which is now Spaulding's Enterprise. Uh, we grew up around him. Uh, Philadelphia Eddie, we called him Crazy Eddie back in the 60s. Uh, Tony the Pirate. Stanley and Walter, uh, the, the newer guys, uh, Randy Adams, Gil Monte, uh, Mr. Tramp, who's gone now. Uh, KC promoted himself as King of the Bootleggers. He's from Akron, Ohio. He passed away this year. Never had an open shop, but he had a freak show. Tattooed in the freak show. Uh, in his, he had a beauty shop at home. Tattooed in there in the winter months. And, uh, his basement was his last shop, and uh, uh, tons and tons of people. Uh, Jack Rudy from California, uh, his ex-wife, uh, uh, Randy uh, Adams is from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And when Gil Monte had a shop in L.A., which was uh, first Tattoo Mania, uh, Randy bought or rented the shop next door and they broke the wall through and it was still an itty bitty little shop and he had like six tattoo benches, one private room for off the body with women. And uh, they made money naturally. And during the riots, I remember Randy telling me a story. They flew in, uh, Randy and Andy, and uh, the cabbie wouldn't go up to the shop. It was two blocks away from the riots. So they let him off and they're walking right through all the riots with two suitcases. One EMT box with their equipment, and the other with their clothes in it. And when they got to the shop, all the guys were standing outside with shotguns protecting the shop, but they never made it down that far. And that was right across from the Viper Room, which uh, Johnny Depp owns. Uh, Sailor uh, Jerry, uh, Sailor Bill, uh, Jack and Ruthie, they were carnival people that, uh, from Gibsonton, Florida. They'd come up north in the, in the summer months back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and, uh, when I started in 68, there was about 125 artists. Uh, the only shops they were, because everybody was on circuses and carnivals back then, were either on military towns or beach towns, uh, like Lauderdale, Miami. Other than that, it was all military. So in our travels, going north and south, it was mostly where my old man played the carnivals, and so did I as I got older. You try to hit a shot during uh, the first or the 15th payday. So you work two, three days straight, and you come out of there. Now this is in the 60s, and you come out of there with three to five grand, working like two days nonstop, three days nonstop, which was a whole lot of money back in them days, and still is today for a short time. Uh, I, I can't, uh, She's San Francisco, Lau Tuttle, very famous artist. He opened up the first real museum for tattooing. And he's the one who tattooed uh, Peter Fonda, Janis Joplin, that was his claim to fame. And he had a really great museum, the, the movie uh, uh, The Tattooist with uh, Maud Adams and Bruce Stern. He had, uh, they get, somehow got wound up with the casting uh, which they put around uh, Maud Adams' body so they didn't have to paint it on every day. Uh, he, he had a, a really nice museum. I know it burnt down. That was on uh, 7th and Market Street in San Francisco. Uh, since then, that tree is all uh, rebuilt. They moved the shop down the street. Uh, Gil Monte, before he was uh, Gil the Drill that never worked and never will, I met him in Daytona at Bike Week at Tattoo Tony, Tony DePietro. 
live there permanently and Daytona's illegal, so there's a few of us that met every year at Tony's house. And uh, I met Gil there, Mr. Tramp, uh, uh, Charlie uh, Bond, uh, there's tons of people there. And uh, through the years, they come up north, stay with me, work my shop, and then we go to either Am Jam or the Harley Rendezvous or uh, an Am Jam tattoo in January in the wintertime. Uh, it used to be in uh, the reserve building, but uh, once war broke out uh, in the desert, they had to move to the Plumbers Union. Since then, I think it moved to Syracuse, and they stopped doing the bike event. 